Death Valley, located on the periphery of the Mojave Desert and sitting 300 feet below sea level. It's one of the Earth's harshest landscapes. Four north-south facing mountain ranges from the edge of the valley to the Pacific Ocean create a severe rain shadow. And as such, the valley averages a mere two inches of rain a year. The landscape is barren, covered in rocky slopes of sandstone, granite, and basalt flows from ancient volcanoes. Wind-strewn sand dunes and salt pans make up the valley floor, which was at one time a lake. The bare, rocky ground contributes to the overbearing heat through a process called solar heating, wherein the solar energy irradiates from the rocks and sand and further heats the valley. Due to the low elevation of the valley, this heat then gets trapped. Because of this, temperatures here average over 90 degrees throughout the year and average over 100 for five months a year. Recorded extremes are as high as 134 and as low as 15. It's a land as beautiful as it is deadly. During a routine surveillance mission, National Park Ranger Dave Brenner spotted something odd. A minivan parked in the Anvil Canyon Arroyo. Brenner landed and investigated the van. It was stuck in the sand and its tires were flat from the rugged terrain of the Arroyo. Brenner wrote down the license plate and reported it to DVNP headquarters. From there, California Highway Patrol determined the van was a rental and that Dollar rent a car had reported it stolen a month before. The vehicle had been rented by a German family, Egbert Rimkus, his girlfriend Cornelia Meyer, and their respective children, George Weber and Max Meyer. Search and rescue surveyed the area, but only found some wrappers in the dirt around the van and an empty beer bottle two miles down the Arroyo. After four days, they called the search off. Nothing else had been found, and it was clear the family would not be found alive. For the next 13 years, the case would be a mystery and would be the subject of internet sleuths and conspiracies. The family arrived in the U.S. on the 8th of July, first landing in Seattle, before catching an immediate flight to Los Angeles. Once there, they rented the aforementioned van and vacation around the San Clemente area for a while. On the 12th, Egbert requested a wire transfer of $1,500 from his bank in Dresden. After spending some time on the coast, they headed up to Las Vegas, where again, on the 21st, Egbert faxed his ex-wife requesting a wire transfer, which she declined. The next morning, they checked out of the hotel and would proceed to Death Valley. In Stowe, they had beer, bourbon, juice, some water, a sleeping tent and bag, and their luggage. Upon arrival at the Death Valley, they stopped at the Furnace Creek Visitor Center and bought a copy of Death Valley National Monument text in German. Photos recovered from their camera suggest they camped the first night in Hanauapa Canyon, located towards the northern end of the valley. Temperatures towards the top of the canyon would have been somewhat cooler with highs around 105 and a nighttime low around 80. Come morning, they headed down the west side road, an unpaved road straddling the western side of Badwater Basin. Some speculate they had plans of taking a quick tour through Death Valley before heading to Yosemite and back to LA. Something that would be hard, if at all possible, to pull off. Their van was due back the 26th, and their flight back home, the 27th. This would be a minimum 15 to 16 hour drive, not including sightseeing, stops, or traffic. As they came to the end of West Side Road, they took a turn on Warm Springs Road, which led up onto the Panamint Range on the west side of the valley. In years past, the Panamint Range was home to mining operations that fizzled out in the early decades of the 20th century. These old camps have been left to wither in the desert, 
with a few still standing as tourist traps. The family stopped at one such camp, Warm Springs, and signed their names in the logbook. Underneath, they left a note saying, We are going over the pass. The pass in question was most likely Mango Pass, ironically named after one of the earlier explorers of the region, German-American prospector Carl Mangle. Located on the southwest side of the Panamint Range, it's the only way out, other than from whence they came. Coming out on top of the canyon, they found themselves in Butte Valley. They then headed to the geologist's cabin, an old prospector's cabin left for public use these days. In this cabin, it's food, water, and shelter. However, the family only stopped here for a visit, stole the flag, and possibly took some water. Then proceeding to Mango Pass, where they would have realized that the van was unable to overcome the rocky terrain. So they went back, but instead of returning to the cabin or trying to go down Warm Springs Road, they went east, down Anvil Canyon. The canyon had not been an official road for years at this point, and had degraded into nothing more than a sandy arroyo. As they headed down the arroyo, the rough ground tore apart the tires. Based on the tire tracks found, they drove at least 200 feet or so like this before pulling off to the side and getting stuck in the sand. One can only assume that any unease the family had felt in the previous miles of traversing the desert has turned into dread. They were stranded, miles away from anybody, in the vast expanses of the desert. Candy wrappers and fecal matter found around the van by search and rescue point to them camping out there for a night. The map the family had been using to navigate listed a military base, the China Lake Naval Base, about 10 miles south of their location. Certainly, they would have assumed that this was their best opportunity for help. So they started hiking down Anvil Canyon. After a couple miles, they turned south, heading over a ridge between Needle and Sugarloaf Peak. After crossing said ridge, they would have come out to a large alluvial fan sandwiched between more ridges. They had no shade, no food, and possibly no water. Crossing these ridges and valleys in 105 degree weather would have been absolute hell, and the likelihood of them making it was slim. Their remains were found next to a bluff on the other side of the basin. It is unknown if they made it any farther. If they were to make it to the top of the next ridge, they would have seen nothing for miles. The military base was actually a weapons testing range. It was nothing but sand and scrub for miles. As mentioned earlier, what happened to the Germans was a bit of a mystery until 2009, when volunteers Tom Hood and Les Walker retraced their steps and found their remains under that little hill. They also found Cornelia's passport and bank ID, a journal, and wine bottle. The children's remains were never officially found, though small bones in the area were found and the sole of what appeared to be a child's shoe. The tale of the Death Valley Germans is one of ignorance, a sobering reminder of what happens when man underestimates nature. <laughs>